One Piece promotes amazingly great values. The type of values that our society is based upon. Of values like friendship and loyalty, love, freedom, free will, joy, positive male role models, positive masculinity. That's really surprising given today. Kindness, desire to have peace instead of war, which is surprising. There's a lot of war. There's a lot of violence in the show. However, our main characters do not seek that. The good guys of the show are not war-loving characters, and that's really important. Hopefulness, compassion, patience, empathy, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, meekness. All of these values are baked into the crust and into the soul of One Piece. And believe me, I'm as surprised as the next guy. I didn't expect this. I expected another fun romp or hoped it would be. But I didn't expect the type of values I saw portrayed on screen, and they are positive, and they are good, and they are good for families, and good for our children, and a good way to teach our children. And these are the things that we should be teaching our children anyway. But the fact that these back these up is amazing and brilliant. I'm very proud of these writers and directors and the crew of One Piece, because what they did was they honored, they honored the Japanese creator that created this all the way back in 1997 as a manga magazine it became an animation two years later, and then in 2023, finally became the live action that we're talking about now. The fact that we follow a crew led by Luffy D. Monkey, one in the same name, right? Luffy D. Monkey. A lot of them are very lost when they start off. They're in a dark place, but look at the world that they're in. They are in a world of pirates. There are a lot of bad pirates that like to, to pillage and raid villages and steal and plunder and murder. So yes, they live in a dark world, but you know, so do we, don't we? And of course, this of course reflects that because you know our world is fallen and we live in this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. And our characters do rise above that. A major part of the character arcs of our main characters is the fact that they start off in a bad place and they get to a better one, which has a catalyst of mainly Monkey D. Luffy, of course, which we're gonna, for now on, we're just going to call him Luffy. I just like saying the name at first because it's an insane name. But the, the, based on Luffy and his insanely optimistic, childlike view of the world, the fact that he is at his core a good person, and this is probably both nature and nurture. You know, I believe that we're all innately good. It's just the nurture of this world can corrupt us and lead us to making a bunch of bad decisions. That's life. Rising above that is life's greatest challenge. Rising above and becoming better than we've been given, better than we've been taught, and better than we've been shown by society, by our families, by our friends, by our schools, by our government. Rising above that and becoming the best people we can be where did Luffy learn these good values? He learned them from an older pirate, visited the village in which he lived. His name is Shanks. And Shanks is an amazingly good man that teaches Luffy many, many things. We learn a lot of this in a flashback. And in this flashback, we learn what a great positive male role model Shanks is. He is a good person. And he imbues his values and teaches Luffy to be better. It's such a wonderful message, isn't it? The fact that we are honoring a man, this is a good man, and he's teaching a child to be better. We, we are missing that in, in entertainment today, aren't we? Men are often knocked down, and yet this show rises above that and is better for it. Episode 1 starts off by stating that we are live in a world of pirates, of grand adventure. And that's the promise that the show gives us. A promise that is fulfilled over the course of eight episodes in the course of one season. We meet the most notorious and famous and wealthy pirate in the world. His name is Gold Roger. And a vice admiral of the Marines who work on the pleasure of the world government is having him executed before a massive crowd. So that's how the show opens up. And right before his execution, Gold Roger looks out into this massive crowd and says, you can have all the wealth and power and fame you want. 
You just have to go find it. That there are consequences for your actions. Gold Roger broke the law. He broke the law, and guess what? He paid the price. That's another very important message, that your actions have consequences, that crime gets punishment. These are just the laws of the universe, that there has to be a balance of things. And when there's a crime that's committed, somebody has to pay. And when the criminal doesn't pay, tendency is we all pay. Instead of this public execution being an omen or a warning sign, a mass crowd just runs out of the town and they run to their ships and an entire new age of pirates is born. An entire new generation is out looking for what's called the One Piece. And then we meet Monkey D. Luffy in a boat and he's adrift and he's explaining his dream and what does he want to do and he needs a crew and he wants not only to be a pirate, Monkey wants to be, Luffy wants to be, I want to be king of the pirates! This, with his arms up, kind of like the poster behind me, is, is throughout the show. He, again, has this childlike exuberance, view towards the world, and zest for life. He wants adventure, and he wants freedom. Most of all, he wants freedom. And freedom to live his life, and live his life the way he wants. And I think we can all share that, can't we? I mean, freedom can go too far, but we all deserve and want freedom. However... This view needs to be tempered some, and is tempered some, in that it's a very simplistic view of the world, that I'm going to go out, I'm going to be king of the pirates, and I'm going to have all this stuff, and, and I'm going to be a great pirate, I'm going to have freedom. Yeah, the world's not that simple. It's just not that simple. And, and he will and should find this out. That's life. We all start off life really with that same kind of view, don't we? We can do anything. We want to do anything. I'm going to become anything. Nothing wrong with that. Dreams are important. Striving for excellence is monumentally the best thing we can do. However, it's not always that easy. And a lot of times life has very different plans than the ones in which we make for ourselves. Luffy asks many people throughout this first episode, what is your dream? What do you want? What do you want most in life? The show really focuses in on that. Luffy meets many people along the way, especially in the first couple to three episodes. And he meets his entire future crew by, I believe, episode five. And along the way, though, everyone but Luffy, most of them have a negative view of pirates. Luffy changes this. For example, he meets Zoro, who's a, who's a pirate hunter. He's been following pirates and all over the world, capturing them as a bounty hunter, bringing them back to the Marines to get their bounty. That's what he does. OK, and he's very notorious for this. So therefore, he's seen a lot of bad guys and you would naturally have a bad view of them, given what you've seen. Even though you've seen 20 bad pirates in a row, doesn't mean all pirates are bad. Nami has an extremely negative view of pirates. Given her backstory that we find out through the course of the season, especially towards the end of the season, she has every right in the world for believing this. And there's great tragedy in her background at the hand of pirates and continuing trauma at the hand of pirates. So Nami has the greatest hurdle over which to jump, to come to the fact that, oh, maybe Luffy can be a good pirate. Maybe that's a possible thing, but it takes some time and it takes Luffy proving himself. Kobe, though, Kobe is a prisoner of a pretty bad pirate. So we meet Kobe there early on in episode one, Usopp. We meet Usopp. He's had a lifelong fear of pirates. OK, so you can, you can kind of see this is getting, setting a tone for how the world operates. There are pirates and there are non-pirates. Next up, Sanji. I love Sanji. Sanji's my favorite character. Not only is he a chef, but he's a, he's a great fighter, and he's great with words. Anyway, I love Sanji, my favorite character. Not as bad view of pirates. Luffy is adrift. He's in a barrel. He meets him in the belly of the ship, and pretty soon they start talking. He finds out that Kobe is prisoner of Captain Alvita, a, a raider, a pillager, not a very nice lady, 
at all. And and he's he's part of her crew, but really by force. He's there as a prisoner. Luffy saves him, gets him off the boat, beats up Elveda, makes a future enemy in that. And as they're in a rowboat going away from Elveda's ship, he then relays his backstory. And in this backstory, we finally we get to see Shanks. Shanks is intelligent. He is humble. He is hardworking. He's a good man and a really positive role model that portrays very positive male masculinity, the right kind. Luffy, to prove himself this big bad pirate, cuts his own face with a knife, all right? You know, he wants to be a big bad pirate, which is kind of an antithesis of what he's been seeing from Shanks, by the way. But again, that's his view of pirates in general. And he has a lot to learn. He's just a little boy when this happens. While Shanks is stitching him up, the most wonderful thing is said. The lessons from the scar is what's important. It's the lessons we learn from the scars that we obtain in life. And these can't, aren't always physical scars. They might be emotional scars, spiritual scars. You just the battle wounds of life. We're all in a daily grind, a daily battle. And we, we, take, we take wounds. We get wounded. We get scarred along the way. What we learn from that, the lessons that we take from those things, that's what's important. That's what mold, molds us into being better people in the future. This is what Shanks is trying to teach Luffy. You might get a scar, but what did you learn? Did you learn something from that? Did you become a better person? Shanks is trying to teach him about this. Not too long after, Luffy storms off to the treasure hoard of, of, of Shanks' crew and everything, finds a cool little cube box. It's a very high value. Inside is what's called a devil fruit, specifically a gum gum fruit. Luffy eats it whole <laughs> without, and, and this is partly a, a, a kind of a rebellion, partly out of fascination, curiosity. What this does is this gives him powers. This is what devil fruits do in this fantasy world. These devil fruits, and there's a bunch of different kinds, each one imbuing a certain superhuman type power for the person who eats that fruit. Well, Luffy's gum gum fruit basically makes his body rubber. And he can stretch an insanely long distances. His arm could reach 20 feet away, you know, like, a, like stretching a rubber band. They're at a little seaside shanty bar restaurant, and Shanks and his crew are, are you know, having a, a party together, and a bunch of mean, bully-like pirates come in, and they want a drink. Shanks immediately apologizes and says, hey, we've been celebrating. There's not much left. Here, why don't you take the rest of this bottle? He's like, what am I going to do with this? And he smashes it on the side of the bar. Glass, drink, go everywhere. Shanks is strong enough, could have beat this guy up on the spot if he wanted to. His crew could have beat up the entire crew of this pirate if he wanted to over that one incident. Instead, what does Shanks do? Shanks leans over the bar and says, hey, do you have a mop? To the lady behind the bar. And he gets that mop. And he starts mopping up the glass and the liquid from the floor. And then that pirate knocks even more dishes on the floor. He's like, hey, you like cleaning? And they, they storm off. Shanks continues to clean. This is mind-blowing. This is an amazing man. An amazing character. Because instead of violence, and instead of striking back and seeking vengeance, what does he do? He serves. He cleans. He serves. That is stunning today we don't see that in very many places anymore do we and that's again something that really sets the show apart shanks his character the fact that he will serve others instead of serving himself and getting that immediate gratification that you know i you know just slugging the guy right you smash the last bottle you make a jerk of yourself wham right not your typical pirate that's self-control, right? That's someone without a massive ego. That's someone who serves others instead of serving themselves. Most importantly, this is positive male masculinity. This is real. This is the real stuff. 
This is what real men are made for. Real men are extremely strong. I hate using the term real. But a man can be extremely strong, but that doesn't mean you have to portray or use your strength, except for necessity. I would never hurt anyone. I would never hit anyone. However, if someone came at my family, hurt them, was about to hurt them, and in self-defense, oh, you better believe there would be sides of me, levels deep within, that came out like a roaring lion to attack whomever that is, right? That's that, that fight in that moment. That is self-defense. That is serving others with your strength. To use it around and go around with your chest puffed out and, and act a, a fool with smashing that bottle, that's serving yourself. That's serving ego. Shanks is not like that. At his core, this is a masculine, strong man that holds his fire until he needs to let go, until it's truly warranted. We also meet Roanoa Zoro, which they call Zoro most of the time. He's, that pir he's the pirate hunter, future crew member of Luffy. Baroque works. Basically, I, I, as far as I can glean, some kind of assassin type group, but I think they're much more than that. Uh, that's alluded to. The point is, they come and they want to recruit him. And Zoro quickly dispatches with this guy and then and wants to bring him in for the bounty. That's our introduction. What's important about the scene is we get to see his fighting prowess and how good he is with his swords. More importantly, Zoro uh, carries three swords. Yeah, Zoro carries three swords. And the lingering question until the end of episode one is... How do you use three swords? Unless there's a, a third arm you're, you're hiding somewhere. So th that kind of lingers till the end, and then we know, oh, that's how he does it. Kobe, who is a prisoner of Captain Alveda, he wants to be a Marine. He wants to be a Marine so he can protect the innocent and those who can't, can't defend themselves. And these are really great values to have. And he, this is all told to Luffy after Luffy asks one important question. What is your dream? If you could do anything right now, what would you do? He's like, I want to be a Marine. I want to protect people. I want to protect those who can't defend themselves. Such a cool thing. We learn more about Luffy and Kobe, and there, there's a gathering spot in, more, in every sense of the word at another bar restaurant in Shellstown. Everyone has come, has come to Shellstown. Zorro so he can collect a bounty. Nami, so she can steal a map. Luffy, so he can steal a map. And then finally, Kobe, so he can sign up for the Marines. So everyone has their own checklist to do in Shellstown. And in this bar, Nami is looking for the, a, sh a short Marine guy so she can steal his uniform. She's a thief. And Zoro is at the bar having a drink. A little girl comes up with some rice balls. And soon there, and then he's about to partake in one. And then jerk of all jerks comes up. The son of Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan is the head of the local base of Marines. And basically it is a jerk. Steps on a rice ball. Rowena, again, instead of immediately decking the guy, picks up part of the scrap of rice ball that wasn't stepped on eats it, tells the little girl it's delicious. And a fight soon breaks out, and it's started by the Marine captain's son, who's a complete bully, and yet, of course, like all bullies, he's a coward. He draws a sword, and Rowan is like, Rowan is like, uh, you don't want to do that. Don't pull your blade unless you're prepared to use it. Without drawing one of his three swords, he's got three swords, he takes out like six, as in beats up, knocks out, plus the, the captain's son, the, the jerkwad, he, he beats all these guys up by using just his hands and chairs and, and the surface of the bar. Point is, he does not draw a weapon. And he, he disarms and takes out all of these Marines. And Luffy is very impressed in that moment because Luffy is watching. And he's watching Rono Zoro uh, fight all these guys. And more importantly, he's watching him defend the innocent the little girl, he, he stood up for her in that moment. Not only is Zoro a good fighter, but Luffy learned something really important about him as well. We then meet Captain Morgan. They call Axe Hand Morgan. Why? 
He has an ax for a hand. They have this meeting, little powwow. So Captain Morgan leaves Roanoa with a choice. And Roanoa decides to accept his punishment, which is an honorable thing to do, which is seven days in the yard tied up on stocks. And in that moment, of course, we learn a lot about Captain Morgan. We learn how brutal he is to his son, because it, when his son tried to interject into the, into the conversation, he backhands him with the axe hand. Okay, the sucker's made of steel. Didn't, not with the blade part, just backhands him with the big metal round part. This is not a good father. <laughs> not at all. But Zoro accepts his punishment. There are consequences for your actions. Kobe, who's witnessed a lot of this, begins to question, do I want to be a Marine? I just saw really bad Marines acting really badly, not defending the innocent, doing the opposite. And he's questioning, do I even want to do this? It's what Luffy says in response that is brilliant. He said, you know, there's good and bad pirates, right? Kobe learned this. He was prisoner of Captain Alvita, but he now knows that Luffy is a good pirate. There's good and bad. And they say, why can't there be good and bad Marines? There are good and bad people in this world. And what this is teaching is, instead of breaking, making broad generalizations, instead of grouping everyone together, let's base our opinion of them upon their actions, their deeds, who they are, and their character. That's what's important. Not if you're a Marine, because you can have a good one and you can have a bad one. Sad but true. You can have a good pirate, you can have a bad pirate. Sad but true. You can have a good father or a bad father. Shanks is a good father role model. Captain Axiom Morgan, a horrible father. Let's base our opinions of people upon who they are and what they do, their character. That's what's important. And the show is teaching that. And again, this is brilliant. This is rare. This is special. And this needs to be talked about because this show needs to be held up going, you're doing something right here. <laughs> you are actually teaching good fundamental morals and values and on which our society is, is based. Without this bedrock of good ideas, good values, core principles, society collapses in anarchy and chaos. It just, it will. We're seeing that right now around the world, aren't we? We're seeing chaos and anarchy. So it's really wonderful to see this message from Luffy. Hey, there could be good ones and bad ones. And then you know what he says? You're going to be one of the good ones. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So Zoro accepted his punishment. He's tied up in the yard, on the stocks, all spread out, tied up to stocks. Guess who pops out of the ground? That's right, Luffy, Mr. Stretchy Guy. He got through a pipe somehow. This is when they first meet. Their conversation evolves and they talk some. The, the crux of the conversation is this, though. A, he's a pirate hunter. And Luffy is, wants to be a pirate, is a pirate. So therefore, you know, how, right? You know, how could there ever be a future there? Luffy said, you keep saying that. You keep saying you're a pirate hunter. Aren't you more than that? Don't you want to be more than that? It's a good question. Pigeonholing people or pegging them away in one little box and, and defining people by only one aspect of themselves is dangerous. It's wrong. It's not fair to them. It's not compassionate. So this is, this is a really important that Luffy points out. Again, Luffy is so vital to the, 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 the fabric of goodness throughout the show. He's like, don't you want to be more than that? Meaning like, you're, you got to be more than just a pirate hunter. Who are you? Who are you, really? Zoro is a man of honor. And we learn more about this. Uh, coming up, I think, in episode four. And we, we get his backstory. He lives by honor. He lives by code. And he, he wants to fulfill a promise. Promises are important. Honoring your promise is vital. Vital to not only uh, friends and family, but to strangers as well. And it goes to the core of who you are. 
If you don't keep a promise, then you're a liar. Well, Zoro's not a liar. He's a good guy who, again, he's lost. He's lost. He's been struck by tragedy in his own past. And is trying to honor his loss to the best of his ability. That's Zoro. Luffy's exactly who he needs and what he needs in his life to give him purpose and direction and to start broadening the scope of who he believes he is. You're, yeah, oh, maybe I'm not just a, a pirate hunter or the guy they call the demon. Maybe I'm Zoro, who actually had a really good background until tragedy struck. The fact that Luffy can bring this out of people. Who are you? What is your dream? Isn't there more? Isn't that beautiful? I, I, I wish we could all do that with each other. So many people have been tricked into defining themselves by one characteristic. And I bet you can think of what some of those are. Just think about the world in which we live. And, but these characteristics, these little finite parts of ourselves, and sometimes they're just the way we look, where we're from, and so on, how we act, what we like. Again, that's one small part of us. That's not the, the sum of us. It's far from the depths of who we are and where we've originated from. So at the end of their conversation, Luffy untied Zoro. He's like, if you want to be the greatest swordsman in the world, then you're wasting your time here. So he lets him go. He frees him. And then he disappears back to the great. He soon meets up with Nami. Again, also looking for that map. Luffy and Nami end up meeting in the map room of the base. And they quickly find out they're both looking for the same thing. And they both basically have laid a claim to it, even though it doesn't belong to either one of them. And then they are kind of bound in this quest to get the map. And they actually run into Axiom Morgan in the hallway. She lifts his keys. Remember, she's a thief. And that way, and then they're headed to Axiom Morgan's office, where the map is. At the same time, Zoro, who's now freed from his bonds and freed from being a prisoner, he goes and tracks down Hel Helmeppo. I still can't say that name. Axiom Morgan's son. He finds him with Zoro's third treasured sword. Zoro has two swords that are with a, a, a black uh, handles and one is white. And he's holding the white one. That's the treasured special third sword. That doesn't go well. Well, what I mean is this. He says, are you going to kill me? And Zoro says, no, I've got something much worse in mind for you. So basically, Nami and Luffy, they get to Axiom Morgan's office the end result is, he, with his stretchy powers and whatever, he pulls the safe straight out of the floor. She wasn't able to crack it in time. Axiom Morgan's pounding at the door across the room. They fall down into the courtyard with the safe, the entire safe. And remember, inside the safe is a map to the Grand Line. Axiom Morgan comes up. Massive big old axe blade on his arm. And right before he fights them, he takes off his coat we see like three or four scars on his forearm. It's real quick. It's in, the fore it's in the foreground, okay? Camera's here, shooting, I believe, over his left arm. And we can see these scars here. That's foreshadowing. There was also foreshadowing in the bar as well. A crew member of a future bad guy from episode two, Buggy, he's in the bar. We see him real quick. But those scars are foreshadowing of another bad guy that gets a two-episode arc, by the way. They soon discover that this guy's modded up. He's extremely strong, fast, and powerful. Who knows what he's done to his body to make him so. However, they are eventually victorious. We find out how strong Zoro is. He picks that safe up and just puts it on his shoulder. You know, and they get away. So they're all getting loaded up on the boat, and they're about to get away. Out of the blue comes Axiom Morgan's son. Remember, Zoro said... I've got something better in mind for you. Well, he took his long shoulder-length blonde hair and cut it like this high, like kind of above his ears. The most ridiculous, puffy kind of long bowl cut you can imagine. It's, it's awful. <laughs> it's, 
that becomes his new hairstyle for the rest of the season. This is an act of mercy because Zoro could have slit his throat, could have hurt him, could have killed him. Uh, he's had to kill people before, but no, he took away something much more precious. Zoro took away his vanity. They start laughing at him. They just start laughing at him. And then he's threatening them. He's like, I'm going to take you in. I'm the Marines. And then all of a sudden, Kobe, out of nowhere, socks him. Just knocks him clock straight out. He's out. Well, this, of course, allows everyone to do their goodbyes. And Kobe, in that moment, said, I'm sticking around. He decides to be a Marine. Yeah, he's seen both sides now. Okay? He knows there are good pirates and bad pirates. And he's going to make a leap of faith that there are good Marines as well. And this is a paid-off leap of faith. This is something that is rewarded, his leap of faith, that there are good Marines out there, because he finds one. The actor who plays Luffy is brilliant. He has such zeal for his character, but he has range. It's not just the, oh, I'm going to be king of the pirates. It's not just it's over the top childlike exuberance for life he's got depths and we see that played out not only in his serious conversations that he has in episode one uh and, and and moving forward and continuing but there are moments where you know he means business and he is serious and you believe every ounce of his being is i'm gonna do this it's right and you know like you can see the strength uh, it's just that he's an amazing actor. This entire cast of young actors is brilliant. And it's such a treasure, it's such a delight that their ability as actors are now conveying what's on the written page. Because what's on the written page are, are good things. That the values and the principles that One Piece is giving us are, are great values and principles that we all need to strive for. And the actors, though, their ability to give us these lines and make us love these characters and be invested in their, each of their character arcs, um, they're great. I mean, great doesn't do us justice. They are brilliant. Garp is the Vice Admiral of the Marines. He gets a, uh, a phone call. If, if you already know what I mean by if, it, if it's a phone call, right? If you haven't seen One Piece, you'll know what I mean. It's it's a fantasy world. It's, re it's the most ridiculous telecommunication system you can imagine. And this call tells him that the Shelltown Marine Base has been attacked, has, and something's been stolen. He's like, what, gold? Uh, you know, uh, has uh, weapons? Like, and then he finds out a map to the Grand Line has been stolen. And he turns to his first mate and tells him. And then he's like, by a guy in a straw hat, a pirate in a straw hat. This is key. Garp knows who Luffy is. That's left lingering, of course. We later find out why he knows who Luffy is, why that's so insanely important, but it's a great little tease for what's coming up. And then speaking of teases, we're, we, we have a tag right into episode two, and so we meet Buggy the Clown. This guy's over the top. He was actually on uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before, and uh, you probably know him from there, and uh, he's fantastic. It's this over-the-top evil clown, and he, he is a critical adversary in, in episode two. If you haven't seen One Piece, please go check it out. Go watch One Piece. Take a look at and look for all of these things that I've talked about. The values, the principles, the ideas, and all these really positive messages. A, is it fun? Yes. Is it a really uh, insane world in which anything can happen? That's the kind of stuff I love. Okay, a fantasy world? Yes. Uh, is it great acting and action and directing and writing? Yes. But the fact that it has these core values and principles that are shared on screen unflinchingly in such a positive and amazing way... This is what makes One Piece a treasure. This is why I love One Piece. And this is why I think you should also love One Piece. If you have any comments about anything I've said, let me know in the comments below. You now know my opinion, so I'd love to hear yours. 
and uh, like it if you like this video. There's going to be more videos like this. I'm going to be doing each additional episode. We're going to cover the entire season as we look forward to season two. Subscribe if you want to. I'd love it if you did. You guys have a great day and have a good night. See you guys.